Good evening. I'm Carolyn Schoenberger, and I want to welcome you to Immigration Issues. And we have a very special guest tonight, Michael Collins from Irish Community Services which is part of Irish Heritage Center, which everyone ought to visit. For one thing, they have a great gift shop with lots of great candy, and they have a great Irish bar. Yes, music. we do. Yeah, come and pay us a visit sometime. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, so I'm going to just talk just for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to talk about immigration issues and some other programs that um, are run through Irish Community Services. Thank you. Uh, so I guess the first thing I, I should mention is that if you are an immigrant and you are thinking of becoming a United States citizen or even uh, a lawful permanent resident, the one thing you don't want to do is have anything to do with marijuana. So that's a double negative. I'm going to make it as a positive negative. Don't have anything to do with marijuana. Don't use it. Don't help produce it. Don't help manufacture it. Don't help sell it. Don't help transport it. Marijuana, having marijuana, is still a federal crime. It is still a crime in our neighboring states of Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana. Uh, you don't want Wisconsin. You don't want to have anything to do with marijuana because that can very negatively affect your application to become a lawful permanent resident or to become a citizen. So I think that that's absolutely important. Uh, I want to mention something about the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation. Uh, the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation does, as is mentioned, bring cases and help people who have legal problems in the public interest. It's a nonprofit centered downtown. However, there are partnerships with many other entities, um, partnerships. Uh, for example, on the 24th of February, I'm going to be at San Terivio Church back of the yards doing a legal cafe where people can come and ask questions, not just immigration. I'm getting quite a number of landlord tenant questions, a couple will questions. So if you have a legal question, call San Terribio Church and tell them you'd like to come in and they'll, they'll give you an appointment. Uh, I've also been to St. Simon Church. Uh, I will be there on March 24th. And again, we're having a legal cafe and uh, again, if you have an interest in contacting, maybe arranging for a presentation, uh, need legal assistance in certain areas such as dealing with powers of attorney, guardianships, particularly guardianships if you're an immigrant family, uh, you have a special ed case, again, you have rights and we're happy to help you. So you can contact Caroline at SchoenbergerFoundation.org, and I'd be happy to talk with you. Okay, so I want to now, uh, perhaps before we begin, Michael, why don't you tell us just a little bit in general about Irish Community Services? Sure. So Irish Community Services is a 501c3 not-for-profit. We're an immigration and social service provider, um, and and we, uh, well, they, in our tagline. Uh, it's descriptive enough. We do provide um, direct legal immigration services um, as well as um, social work services that are focused on the elderly. Um, and more recently, we have um, a new youth program for um, a, which we're calling a community play group, which provides socialization for, for young folks, uh, for young, young toddlers and their, and their caregivers, as well as an adapted classes um, for teenagers with disabilities. Um, introducing them to um, theater, music, art, um, through using as using um, Irish culture as a channel. Can you just uh, just because I came from a special ed meeting sure. uh, later or earlier this afternoon? Can you just tell us a little bit about the you know your last? topic. Um, sure, the adapted classes? Yeah. Um, so the adapted classes are actually starting um, on uh, February 11th. They'll run every Tuesday. Um, we have a capacity of up to 10, up to 10 children. Um, so th there's still room. I believe we have six registered at the moment. So if, if you'd like to get involved um, or if you, if you know somebody w with a disability who would like to get involved in um, anything ranging from theater to music to, um, to arts and crafts, 
um, you know, do give us a call. We're happy to get them registered. Um, and Grace is um, my colleague. Uh, her name is Grace Otomosu. She's running our, she's our Youth and Family Engagement Coordinator, and she's actually the facilitator of that program. Where can they contact you? Um, so you can contact us a variety of ways. Um, the best way is probably the telephone. Um, we're open 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m., and our office telephone number is 773-282-8445. Alternatively, you can reach us um, through our social media platforms, which is, they're all, our Facebook and our Twitter are at ICS Midwest. You can reach us by email, which is info at irishchicago.org, or on our website, which is www.irishchicago.org. So, I mean, there are, you have programs for seniors, too, as I recall, too. Yeah, we do. Um, so we run w weekly senior meetings. Um, these happen out of both the Irish Cultural Center on the north side, which is the Irish American Heritage Center, and the Irish Cultural Center on the south side, which is Chicago Gaelic Park. Um, we meet every Wednesday, um, and we, we, we would alternate Wednesdays. So, uh, for example, today is Wednesday. Uh, we, we were out of um, the Irish American Heritage Center this week, and next week we, we, our, our, um, our senior group will meet at Chicago Gaelic Park. The meetings run from 10 a.m. until 12.30 p.m., um, we'll have light refreshments, tea, coffee, cookies, and usually there's an educational or um, musical performance. Um, we, we'll do a range of topics about um, how to enroll in Medicare or, you know, how to navigate um, social welfare systems or, you know, elder care, caregivers, things of those natures, as well as more social events like music, like mu movies, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have bingo night, things of that nature. Well, it's a, it's a great program, both for kids and seniors. And again, I did not visit the Irish Heritage Center until I met you. Yeah. And I can't believe that I didn't go up there because they, they, again, they have the best gift shop. Yeah. A fabulous gift shop. And they have a, they have a wonderful Irish bar. Yeah, and it, like if, if you're, um, so this is not part of Irish Community Services, this is the Irish American Heritage Center, but they do have a great bar. If, if you'd like to listen to music, they do a Kaylee um, every week. I believe it's on Thursdays. There's live music in the pub at the Irish American Heritage Center Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, so if you'd like to go listen to some traditional Irish music, um, I'd, I'd encourage you to go. Um, and as Caroline alluded to, the, the gift shop in, uh, in the Heritage Center is a great place to pick up some authentic Irish uh, treats and uh, sausages and things treats, of that nature. Treats, sausages, uh, sweaters. Uh, I, again, it's, it's one, it's a, whenever I go in to visit Michael, work with the Irish Community Services, I try to make it a point not to pass by them because I know that if yep. I can win, there's no way. And they appreciate your business. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. So, uh, again, why don't we give the contact information, then let's talk about some of the immigration and legal services that are provided through Irish Community Services. Your, your uh, Facebook page is? Sure. So our, our social media taglines, they're all the same. So our Facebook and our Twitter, you can find us by at ICS Midwest. Um, and if you'd like to reach us by email, our email is uh, info at irishchicago.org um, and the director heads of each each department will will have access to that email um, so if you're if you're emailing about the youth club or our senior services or even our legal services that that email is kind of all-encompassing and will reach will reach the the necessary department um, and our telephone number is 773-282 Eight four four five. Um, if you'd like to read more about our organization, I would encourage you to visit our website. Um, it's it's pretty up to date with with schedules and programming, um, and our, our our website is www.irishchicago.org. Okay, so I want to invite people who are listening in. If you have questions about either organization or questions about what we're talking about, please don't hesitate to call. 312-738-1060, and we'll be happy to answer your question. Okay, I'm going to pull up the flyer. Sure. Um, assuming I can find it. Okay. Yep. So Irish Community Services is sponsoring a number of legal clinics. Yep. The first one, New Americans Initiative uh, Citizenship Workshop, yep. March 7th. Yeah, so uh, March 7th uh, from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., and this will take place in the Irish American Heritage Center. 
Um, uh, we have another citizenship workshop taking place on Saturday, April 25th, also from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. out of the Irish American Heritage Center. And finally, we have our last workshop of, um, on schedule at, at current time on Saturday, June 13th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. in the Irish American Heritage Center. Um, our citizenship workshops are funded through the New Americans Initiative, um, which, it, which is administered by the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. And this program, uh, specifically the workshops, is a great opportunity for folks who are ready and prepared to, to apply for citizenship. It gives you a great opportunity to get both a legal screening um, so, which they'll screen for some, Caroline is actually one of our volunteer attorneys, um, who will screen for eligibility, and then you'll move on to a next phase, which is actually completing the N-400, the application to become a U.S. citizen, um, and then uh, the, the final stage is document review and making sure that you have all the necessary documents to, to go into your application. So would you recommend contacting, scheduling something, or you just show up? So I always recommend um, giving us a call and registering. Um, that, that helps us know how many attorneys we need. It, it helps with the, with the flow of the workshop and things of that nature. So if it, however, if you don't call, you, you, we, you are more than welcome. We will be able to, to service you, and we will be able to provide that service. Seven, you might seven, just be waiting a little bit longer. 773-282-8445. Okay, so I'm going to again show the yep. overhead. Oh, except that you can't really see it. 773 282 8445. And it is recommended that you do let people know because if 100 people show up and there are only two attorneys, you'll be there for a while. Yeah, exactly. Registration helps us with planning purposes, so we, we'll, we'll, we can make sure that everybody that comes. Um, gets the adequate time and attention that, that's, that they need. So let's just go over some of the basics. So if you're a married to a U.S. citizen and you've lived with them for three years, can you apply to become a citizen? You can. Um, so if, as long as there's nothing in your background that would prohibit you from applying for citizenship, um, but at the, the time requirement is three years if, you're, if you got your green card through uh, a, a marriage to a U.S. citizenship, to a U.S. citizen rather, um, and you can actually apply a little bit before your three-year deadline. You can apply up to two years and nine months. Um, so th that means your, your application will be in process by the time your three re years rolls around. And it's, everything's taking a lot longer. I'm going to get back to problems that could come up. Sure. What if you're not married to a U.S. citizen, you got your green card through your son? Sure. So if, if that's the case, um, you would have to wait five years to, to be eligible um, for citizenship. Um, but again, a similar situation, you can apply four years and nine months. Um, so that way, again, your, your application will be in process by the time your five years rolls around. Um, but the, the, you do have a longer residency period requirement if you do not obtain your, your green card through a, a, um, a, a spouse. So uh, what are the benefits of becoming a U.S. citizen? There's an array of benefits. Um, the, so the, the, the easy ones are you're eligible to vote, right? You are eligible. Please vote. <laughs> yep, please vote. After, you, after your swearing-in ceremony, register to vote, become an active participant in American society. Um, you, you know, we, we need as many engaged voters out there as possible. Um, the, the second thing is um, that you're eligible to travel on a U.S. passport. Um, to, depending on where you come from, your passport may, may require visas to a lot of countries. The U.S. is, is one of the most powerful passports on the planet um, and will, will free up some travel opportunities for you. Um, the third and, you know, what I think is the most important one is um, it prohibits you from ever being deported. Um, and, and Usually. Well, and, unless it was obtained in fraudulent means, but that, uh, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. um, but it, the, the one thing about becoming a U.S. citizen, if there's any infractions in the future, it won't uh, result in you being uh, d deported to your home country. Um, so it, you, know, you, you really are here to stay once you, once you naturalize, which is very important. I, I think of being a lawful permanent resident as being on permanent probation. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. That if you do certain yeah. types of acts, uh, an example, uh, now if you have two DUIs, you are subject to being deported. So if someone shows up, and when you come, it's very important to bring a copy of a police letter 
Yep. Or yeah. a certified disposition. If you have access to a certified disposition, that's that, that I think is even better. But, but yes, um, some sort of documentation. Yes, you, you need because if I'm screening and I see t two DUIs, even if it's supervision. <clears throat> supervision means not guilty yeah. in Illinois. But according to the Immigration Service, it's guilty. If I see two, I'm going to say, I don't think you should go through with this because you are being subject to being deported. Yeah. So two DUIs, certain types of other criminal uh, offenses, Domestic violence is a problem. Yeah. Anything with drugs. I, m I mentioned the marijuana yeah. before. Um, you want to avoid that, but it's important when you come to a screening to be prepared to bring... I, I like police letters because with the court documents, it doesn't always show if there was yeah. supervision. Sure. Because supervision is not a conviction in yeah. Illinois. <clears throat> Whereas if the police letter, and you can get them in Chicago at 35th and Michigan, will tell you the number of arrests and what happened. And that way you know. So one common question, I'm sure that you've heard this too, yep. is I paid my fine, I t attended classes, I cleaned my record. Does that mean anything with immigration law? Expungements do not mean anything for immigration law. They, w they will know. Um, so if, if, you, if, if you had an infraction in your past and you got your record expunged, um, Unfortunately, that's no good for immigration law, and in fact, it can make it a little bit more complicated because now you have to reopen um, those those infractions that were expunged, get your records, and then send them off to 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 immigration. Um, so, un unfortunately, you you can't make anything go away for purposes of immigration. You, you, I, people in Spanish they say they limpié mi mi expediente. I, I cleaned my record. No such thing. Yeah. with immigration and I think what you described means that someone has to prepare the documents, go to court, file them, get a court date, show up for the court date, prepare more documents because you're going to unseal, yeah. get the records and then seal again. So we're talking about having to spend uh, several hundred dollars yeah. to do this. And time. Um, time is a very big thing, especially in, uh, you know, in, in a year like this. Um, it, it's unlikely if you apply at this stage that you will be able to vote in November due to processing times. However, it, during election years, we, we do tend to see a little bit of an increase in the number of people who want to become U.S. citizens. And something like what Caroline has described, where you have to reopen a case, that can prolong your application. And applications for U.S. citizenship I haven't checked in a couple of weeks, but the last time I did check, I believe the processing times were between 9 and 20 months. Um, so that's, you know, obviously will impact your ability if, if voting in the next election is, is, um, is a priority for you, um, th that, you know, that could have an impact on your ability to do that. So, so uh, in coming to the workshop, and I'm going to show the workshop again, coming to these workshops, in addition to bringing uh, a police record. Uh, if, if you've never been arrested, you've never gone to court, then a certified disposition. Yep. Um, but what else do, do you want to bring? And we're looking at March 7th, April 25th, and June 13th. What else do we want to bring? Sure. So uh, the N-400, which is the, for the, um, the application for citizenship, um, it asks a lot of questions on it. Um, and so you should be prepared to know your previous address for the last five years any travel in and out of the United States. Um, and then, it, you know, the attorneys will go through Section 12, which are the quote-unquote legal questions of the N-400, um, which will ask a, a series of questions, really, and, and ranging from anything from traffic violations to, um, you know, some more serious crimes, such as human trafficking or, or things of that nature. So, um, ultimately, but I think the most common ones are travel dates, um, you know, hist residence history, um, because those are a couple of things that... that employment? That, yeah, employment as well is on there. Yep. Employment. And, and I do want to mention something about traveling. Yep. You should not, if you want to become a citizen, you should not be out of the United States for more than six months. Yeah. So that, that's otherwise the, the three years of five years, five years is going to have to start again. Yeah. So and, and certainly if you have, if you've resided outside of the United States for more than a year, a workshop actually wouldn't even be appropriate for you. You'd need to, to speak with an, an immigration attorney. Which will tell you yeah. you've lost your residency unless 
uh, I once represented someone who had a heart attack in Mexico. Hmm. So he was in court. We were able to um, correct the situation, but hopefully no one will go through something like that. But if you're out for a year, the law says you've abandoned your residency. Yep. So, so two photos, two passport photos? Yep, two passport photos. You would need a, a copy of your travel dates. So if, if you bring your passport with you, which we all encourage, um, we would need to scan the, the, your, your travel history for the last five years, the, the in, incoming and outgoing stamps if, the, if they exist, um, a copy front and back of your green card, um, the payment made out to uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I don't know what the new payment is. I know it's going up a lot. It is going up. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know it either. So, but I believe it's it's going up around twelve hundred dollars. I think it's one thousand one hundred and seventy is a get is my, my closest guess. Right now, it's uh, six seven hundred and twenty, which includes the four the six hundred and forty dollar application fee and the eighty five dollar biometrics fee. Um, and one thing that should be noted too in the proposed fee changes uh, that Caroline alluded to is that fee waivers are also proposed to be eliminated for citizenship purposes. So if you're low income, if you're uh, enrolled in public benefits, if you qualify for a fee waiver, we would strongly encourage that you um, pursue the citizenship as soon as possible because once these new rules come into place, um, those that fee waiver goes away, and you you will be liable for that uh, seven hundred and twenty dollars, or you know the new proposal, which is closer to twelve hundred. Yeah. Uh, another question has come up that we have new rules outside of Illinois. Illinois still is enjoining the federal government from disqualifying you if you've ever received public benefits. The the new public charge rules. Yeah. That will change because that will change. It just hasn't happened yeah. yet. Does that apply to someone who wants to become a United States citizen? It does not. Um, it does not apply to somebody who wants to become a U.S. citizen. Um, most of those are the, where this is where that new public charge rule will affect people the most is um, for those applying for a green card for those petitioning family members in from outside of the United States. Um, or, or looking for any sort of a, an adjustment within that, that wouldn't necessarily be uh, citizenship. So, so citizenship is exempt from the public charge rule. Um, and as Caroline said, Illinois is actually a, a exempt from the national rule that um, it just came down, unfortunately, towards the end of January of, uh, of this year of 2020. But New York's going to join the PAC. Uh, pardon me, Illinois is going to join the PAC. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You, you can't yeah. have one law for 49 states and another law for Illinois as much as we may want this special yeah. law, not going to happen. Uh, what are some of the strategies if you have someone, uh, again, it's, it does not affect citizens, but if you try to become a permanent resident, it could mm -hmm. be a problem. And one strategy is to talk with your employer about trying to see if you could get medical coverage. Yeah, um, so in, enrollment in, in public medical programs um, uh, or medical assistance programs, things of those nature, um, that can impact, that, that can be something that they'll look at for public charge. So if you can have employer-sponsored health insurance, that's definitely to your benefit. Um, I think another area that this public charge ruling is really going to have an impact on is our, our folks trying to bring um, their elderly parents to the United States to care for them. Um, certainly in the Irish community, this is something we see quite often. Um, mom and dad is getting older back at home and you'd like to take them over, over to the U.S. Um, that's going to become a little bit more difficult um, given the new public charge rule. And you know, it will require a lot more paperwork. Um, and that's really all I could say at this stage until we really find out how, you know, the, the, the scope of this law, which isn't implemented just yet. It's being, uh, there's a new form that came out today. I haven't had a chance to look yeah. at it. I'm going to go back to mention, because we haven't really talked about the legal clinics. Um, sure. Maybe just Sure. 20 seconds to talk about the legal clinics. Yeah, so our legal clinics are different than the workshops. And the fact that our legal clinics are a one-on-one -on -one private consultation with an immigration attorney. 
Um, so these provide you an opportunity to assess eligibility, to answer any outstanding questions. Uh, you know, if, if you have an infraction in your past and you want to know whether that's going to affect your ability to adjust onto a green card or to apply for citizenship, the legal clinic is a great spot to do that. It gives you the opportunity to troubleshoot your issues directly with an attorney. However, the capacity for us to complete paperwork in the uh, limited time of the clinics is, is not possible. Um, so it is really just a, an assessment clinic um, and registration is required. You'll be given an appointment spot for the legal clinics as opposed to the workshops, which are a little bit more open. So February 13th, February 27th, March 11th, 773-282-8445. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, thank you. For yeah, coming. thank you as always for having me. It's thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. I look yep. forward to seeing you at the workshops or at a legal clinic. On March 11th, come see uh, Caroline and myself. Caroline will be the host of that of that legal clinic. So. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.